So we have been looking at uh, the approach of partial equilibrium approximation and as a uh, template set of equations or reactions I'm sorry uh, we could let us let us look at about three uh, forward and reverse reverse reaction pairs uh, leading up to a fourth reaction which we deliberately take as a term molecular reaction so that it is slow the idea being uh, that if you now have these bimolecular reactions happening relatively faster and they are uh, forward and reverse reaction pairs then we can assume that because they are happening quite fast they could uh, stay in equilibrium with each other which means their respective forward and reverse reaction rates would match and therefore the, the ratio of the, uh, the rate constants of the forward and reverse reactions in each case would turn out to be the um, uh, equilibrium constant based on uh, pressure right and so we can write these equilibrium equations for each of those reactions and therefore we now uh, are uh, um, rewriting these uh, and numbering them as 1, 2, 3. So what is going on with this here is here we are saying uh, we recognize we recognize A2, B2 and A, A2B as uh, stable species and A B and uh, A B as uh, intermediates right we are interested in we are interested in um, d d over dt of concentration of a to b that is the final product whose rate of uh, production we are interested in right now looking at the fourth reaction where this is being produced we could write this as concentration of a times concentration of I am sorry uh, equals k f 4 times concentration of uh, uh, A times concentration of AB times concentration of M right but we need to know what these are the concentration of A and concentration of AB which are intermediates okay in terms of concentrations of the stable species in the system namely A2, B2 and A2B if we were to uh, suppose that we did not have all these things right this is all too much detail all I want to think about is A2 plus B2 gives you A2B or maybe A2 plus half B2 gives A2B right I would I would like to write the rate equation as uh, DC A2B divided by DT equal to K times small k times uh, concentration of A2 times concentration of B2 to the half but there the powers that we are looking at one and half should really be orders and not molecularities because that is like the global reaction and we are not sure that we can actually use the stoichiometric coefficients in the global reaction for the orders right that needs to be empirically found and that is what we are trying to do with the detailed reaction and here the detailed reactions tell us that this is actually in terms of the intermediates which we do not want to deal with we want to now express the concentrations of the intermediates in terms of the concentrations of the stable species when we say stable species we mean both reactants and products because it is possible that the concentrations of these intermediates depend on the concentrations of products stable products as well as concentrations of stable reactants so we, we should not distinguish between products and reactants of, at, the, at the stable level we should simply say stable species right so how do we find these is, how is, is why we write out these three equilibrium um, equations and you see what happens here the uh, intermediates are a b and a b and we have three equations so we, we strictly speaking if as assuming that we are we, we are okay with dealing with a2 b2 and a b a2 b right is it possible for us to write A, B and A, B in terms of the, the, the stable uh, concentrations 
right that is what we want to do having said that we are interested only in these two we are not really interested in concentration of B because that is not part of the final answer. So is it possible for us to eliminate concentration of B in these equations and look for only expressions for concentrations of A and AB in terms of A2, B2 and A2B is, is, is the rigmarole that we have to go through yeah. So um, eliminating eliminating um, CB from equations 1 and 2 you can do this so you can now write this um, with uh, in terms of concentrations of A and B as if you are now looking at only A and B do not worry about AB let it be there and then we have uh, A and uh, um, did I make a mistake equation which there is also a to be in that um, I might have made a mistake let me just check this uh, a b plus a to yeah sure yes so when I write dc a b by dt I mean this step mm -hmm. oh, okay okay okay, okay I, I, I understand what you mean um, yes you are right okay so you are right you are you're right you are right so strictly speaking what I need to do is to factor in okay let us do that thanks um, plus K F3 it is being produced in the forward reaction C uh, C A B um, C A2 minus K uh, F K K B3 um, C A C A to B C A yeah I was wondering about it myself because it, it is not so simple it is not uh, strictly speaking so simple <coughs> you could you could do this but what you would find is this is equal to this because we are assuming equilibrium all right therefore it gets cancelled right so it is always good to go through the details and yeah therefore we are we are, we are stuck with only this right if we if this were not to be cancelled then we, we we understand that this is unknown but this is to be treated as known and uh, this is to be treated as unknown and this is unknown and still we would be requiring concentration of a b and a to be expressed in terms of a 2 b 2 and a, a to B this is the procedure that we are looking for so if you now eliminate C B from equations 1 and 2 um, I am sorry here yes that is what I was searching for <laughs> right so yeah so we now have this so you know so you can, you can rearrange these things do not worry about A B showing up which is an unknown right but you try to eliminate uh, C B what you get here is then C A B equal to K P 1 K P 2 C A 2 C B 2 the whole of the half you can work out the mathematics and uh, you will you, you should you should be able to find that this is the case then um, using uh, using 3 right so we have used 1 and 2 equations let us go to the third equation we should be able to find uh, there is a CA sitting there and uh, AB is something there so we can plug this expression there and so we can find um, C, CA equal to uh, I am just giving the final answer KP3, KP1, KP2 to the half, CA2 to the 3 halves, CB2 to the half divided by CA to B. Therefore, right, 
uh, if you now use if you now write this equation as 4 right that means we are primarily interested in this expression because those two uh, terms got cancelled uh, so what happens is in, in 4 in 4 d c a to b divided by d t is equal to you would have a k f uh, 4 coming in and therefore start with a small k f 4 then you have everything else showing up k p 3, k p 2, k p 1, c a 2 squared, c b 2, c m that is still there uh, will just let me just write this in the same line divided by c a to b. So that is the answer for you I just worked it out for you so you know you know you are not supposed you, you, you should now know how to do these things right. Um, so look at what has happened we now got an answer based on these stable species which is a little bit more surprising than what you would have expected for a global reaction all right which is first of all it is going a square of A2 so you might argue let me write, write the global reaction as instead of A2 plus half B2 gives A2B I might write this as um, uh, twice A2 plus B2 gives twice A2B all right but then that would have meant that I need to have a 2 here which I do not <laughs> okay uh, and then you would be able to say I can put a square here and a power 1 there but the other 2 are extra that, that would have that you would have never figured out right unless you went through the details and if you went through the details as it is without the partial equilibrium approximation it would be a lot more horrendous when compared to having these algebraic equations replace your um, ODEs for the ra ra rates of uh, the intermediates right. So, so you now have a CM which is sort of like saying it depends on the container uh, what is the total number of moles that is there in the entire container because as the pressure increases this now goes as the whole thing will now go as uh, p square p, p, p to the p to the 3 because this is now going to have a contribution um, to the pressure this is going to have a corresponding contribution to the pressure and finally all the four of them should gang up and say it is going to go as p, 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 p cubed right. So this acts uh, in bringing that up number on, on, on the one hand second what is the uh, a2b showing up in the denominator remind you of something that we went through last class self inhibiting reaction right the more a to b that you produce the less the rate at which you are producing it is what, is what this really means and that is because a to b is actually participating in the reverse reaction as well. So more it is getting produced it is also getting depleted all right so all these things kind of come up in these uh, uh, expressions based on the approximations that we do. So let me also give you a simple example uh, which is which is a little bit more realistic uh, here so example just like how we uh, had the uh, what should I say the hydrogen bromide example for the steady state approximation here uh, let us suppose that we have H2 plus O2 gives and takes with the K1 here K2 for the reverse. 2 H O H on the other hand and uh, 2 uh, H 2 plus O H gives K 3 um, H 2 O plus H okay. So here we find that uh, D over D T of C H 2 O equal to K 3 C H 2 COH and I do not like COH sitting there in this I would like to actually have uh, H2 is already there I would like to express COH in terms of H2O2 and maybe H2O that is permissible right that is what I want to do. So I use the uh, equilibrium approximation uh, 
I use the equilibrium approximation and say KP KP two I should KP one let me use the notation KP one comma two are equal to C O H squared divided by C H two C O two right all right that is equal to k1 divided by k2 all right. Now keep in mind when you write kp strictly speaking we should be writing poh square divided by ph2 po2 okay it just turns out that the molecularity is the same for both the forward and the reverse reaction and therefore the the total pressure gets cancelled out and you can write in terms of concentrations directly if the molecularities are not the same for both the sides then you will get into trouble so a more direct thing to do is to probably write kc instead of kp but if you are insisting on kp then there is a conversion between kp and kc that we have gone through that you that you need to factor in yeah um so if if you now use this then what happens is um from here you try to evaluate what your coh is so coh then is kp1,2 ch2 co2 all to the half is what we have and uh, therefore the ch2o is k3 uh, let's let's now get rid of kp12 use k1 and k2 because they are like given information in the reaction scheme and you can say this is k1 divided by k2 to the half ch2 to the half goes with ch2 there and so it is like ch2 to the 3 halves and co2 to the half remains so you have co2 to the half right so that is the that is the final answer what it means is if you were having this as the reaction scheme like a three step reaction scheme for production of hydro water right um, then the partial equilibrium approximation tells you that uh, this, this is partial equilibrium uh, tells you that the rate of production of water actually depends to three halves the power of CH2 and one half the power of O2 okay these are now the orders with respect to H2 and O2 respectively together if you now look at the total order right three halves plus one half is two so you can you can easily see that this is like a second order reaction that we are looking at all right but the the division between the fuel and the oxidizer is not equal that is the that is the lesson that we learn from the, these these things all right let us now do some uh, chemical explosions based on what we have learnt okay so this is the last topic that we would like to cover under chemical kinetics before we proceed on uh, further with uh, other things in combustion um, so So let us let us consider the following schematic reaction mechanism right one X gives you R with reaction rate constant K1 2 R gives you alpha R with a rate constant K2 3 R gives you K3 P plus R 4 
R goes to S and five R K five goes to X. Now this is obviously looking a bit strange. Uh, if it isn't looking strange, then you must be a genius, right? Um, what we mean by a schematic reaction mechanism here is this reaction scheme is focusing only on the intermediates that means there are hidden stuff around that are stable on either side which we are not worried about okay why so because you can now clearly see that this is a chain initiation step right because this is the birth of an intermediate R is the intermediate that we are looking at R becoming alpha R for alpha greater than 1 means we are now branching more and more okay so this is like some intermediate giving rise to more intermediate right so this is chain branching of course alpha less than 1 would mean chain termination kind of reactions right but they they don't they don't really show up like high up in the list okay they are kind of the end and r gives p plus r p is like a stable product like let's say we are interested in this finally okay but then what is what is happening you start with R you have something else and then you also have R so as far as intermediates is concerned it is neutral that means it is a chain propagation yeah so you have a chain chain propagation step in reality you would have a bunch of steps like this okay so each of these kinds of things could be like a bunch it is not just one okay. R going to S is schematically representing chain termination at at a surface whereas R going to X means chain termination at uh, in the gas phase. in the gas phase x is any molecule right so you could have started with any x giving rise to intermediates and r could go back to any x okay so in that sense this is not strictly like a reverse of that because this x could be anything yeah but we are we are we are making a distinction on the way um, the intermediates are getting terminated either at the surface around anywhere or in the gas phase by colliding with other uh, molecules around and uh, disappearing okay. and, and becoming some stable stable species. So note that we make a distinction between termination at the surface at a surface it can it does at a surface and termination in the gas phase why why would you want to make the distinction how does it matter okay, termination means the intermediates disappear right how does it matter which way they disappear what are we looking looking at so whenever we were doing things in the past I asked you to keep an eye out on distinctions between unimolecular reactions to bimolecular reactions in a scheme 
or bimolecular to termolecular reactions in a scheme and so on and the reason was to look at the pressure dependence of the rates of these reactions okay or the differences in the pressure dependence dependence of the rates of these reactions and so as you change the pressure from low pressure to intermediate pressure to high pressure the importance of these different reactions becomes different right so effectively we were looking at what's what's it going to be in terms of pressure similarly looking at the termination either at a surface or in the gas phase is going to be dependent upon pressure because a surface termination is relatively independent of pressure a surface is a hard surface it's not going to it's not going to change its packing depending upon the pressure okay whereas a gas phase is going to actually get more and more packed okay with with, with less and less mean free parts for the for the collision between the molecules as you as you increase the pressure so what you would expect is as you increase the pressure the termination via the gas phase is going to be more and more predominant when compared to the termination via the surface okay so this is this distinction is going to enable us to tell us how things are going to change with pressure right and that's the reason why we want to make this distinction so there's another way of distinguishing things as far as particularly intermediates is concerned okay so the term molecular by molecular and so on is for any species it doesn't have to be intermediates but here we are specifically talking about termination for intermediates in two different parts and they are dependent on pressure in different ways okay that's what we want to try to explore okay so then uh, let's look at how to write the reaction rates for these now I'm going to write these things in such a way that we care only about concentrations of the intermediates we won't worry about concentrations of stable species okay they are not showing up in the schematic reaction uh, reaction mechanism anyway okay there are stable stable react species around which are which we are not simply bothered about because when we looked at a reaction mechanism before to characterize it as a chain initiation branching or propagation or termination we were primarily looking only at the intermediates okay we just disregarded the presence of uh, the stable species okay are always looking for uh, our intermediates being created more of them created than what what's being consumed or the same amount is created and we didn't even distinguish bet between the intermediates like it could be oh on one side and h on the other side doesn't matter they are all very active radicals anyway right so they're going to kind of propagate the reactions if one of them got killed and the other one got produced right so this is the way we were looking at it and of, of obviously they were reacting with stable things like h2 or o2 and so on which didn't which we didn't really worry about and these are all there so since they are they are hidden we can't write rate equations exactly depending upon their concentrations so we are going to write equations that are sort of uh, functionally correct but not accurate right so that's that's what we will end up doing so let us say the first equation so the the uh, rate equations for these these are one let's say we call this omega i for the chain initiation step all we are going to write is dcr over dt because we do not want to be worrying about the fact that it depends on the concentration of x okay we could write k1cx for example okay let me not worry about it okay I am just going to keep this as omega i right second <coughs> omega uh, let us now call this uh, chain branching so we will call this omega b that is equal to dcr over dt as well. Uh, for this reaction uh, here this this would be written as k2 uh, strictly speaking I should write alpha minus 1 k2 cr times other things which are hidden right so I since I do not know what those are I am simply going to write this as equal to fb times alpha minus 1 cr alpha is a parameter here parameter 
uh, f b is like uh, it is going to take care of uh, uh, k 2 dot 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 is like concentrations of stable species okay which which does not enter the picture. So essentially what you are saying is let us deal with f's rather than k's because the f will couch things that are not really important what we what, what we want to explicitly keep a cr okay and uh, so this is a production step so we will call this as uh, omega p uh, the third step this is dcp over dt this is equal to fpcr okay here uh, the, the uh, intermediates are neither getting produced nor consumed on the whole uh, but so if you could say that this is this is basically fp is of the order of the same as k3 you don't but, but you could have something hidden right so we just write f instead of k and uh, for let us call the surface termination reaction rate so we have a negative dcr over dt there and that is uh, fscr we, we do not know what else is there other than r on the left hand side so we just write fs instead of k4 and uh, uh, similarly let us call this omega g for gas phase termination reaction rate uh, this is uh, again minus dc r over dt equal to fg cr all right okay so we have explained what the f's are there and i also told you what the why why this is a schematic here so uh, the rate of production of the intermediates then the net rate of production of intermediates intermediates um, dcr over dt from all the reactions equal to omega i plus fb times alpha minus 1 cr minus f uh, fs cr minus f uh, g cr the third reaction did not have a net rate of production of uh, uh, intermediates at all okay, because it is a propagation reaction yeah. therefore we, we have only uh, four reactions that are contributing here two of them where things are produced if alpha is greater than one that is if alpha is less than one this would mean consumption anyway and obviously here the radicals are getting consumed yeah and keep noting that these things depend on concentration of CR because it is like chain branching or uh, or termination but omega i does not depend on concentration of CR because it is starting from um, things that are pre-existing pre that is they are not intermediates fine we now apply the steady state approximation right or if you want to be quite precise we should say quasi steady state approximation that means dcr over dt the net rate of production is approximately equal to 0 for bulk of the time when reactions are proceeding right so <coughs> this implies um, we now say that omega i plus f b alpha minus 1 c r minus f s c r minus f g c r is approximately equal to 0 from which we can try to find out the concentration of the uh, intermediate. So this implies c r is equal to omega i divided by uh, fb alpha minus 1 minus fs plus fg 
okay. So the steady state approximation did this for us you go back and think about what we did what it means is we want to get algebraic equations that govern the concentrations of intermediates right so that we can evaluate the concentrations of the intermediates in terms of the concentrations of the stable species and then plug those expressions in the rate equation for the production of products that is what you are finally interested in right. So what we should then say then we are interested in dcp by dt that is a products it is kind of like this is this, this kind of like life you know we should be interested in the in, in producing products but we keep going going talking about intermediates like <laughs> in most of our lives that we just caught, get caught up in intermediates right. So let us not lose sight of our goal our goal is actually dcp over dt <coughs> right fp times uh, cr of course in, in, in life money is one of the biggest intermediates that distracts us <laughs> right yeah where I am uh, I'm losing now. Oh. Here, yes. because let us admit that by swapping the um, denominator, I do not like negative signs for concentrations, <laughs> right? So we say Fs plus Fg minus uh, Fb times alpha minus 1. Happy. Uh, you need to keep me happy as well. Don't get negative concentrations. You know, right? Your your uh, your advisors are not going to like you <laughs> when you get them. Right? So, <laughs> so you want to you want to have a positive quantity there. Okay. So F F P C R then is uh, F P omega i divided by F S plus F G minus fb times alpha minus 1 okay I pointed out this for you earlier in, in the context of let us say the uh, HBR reaction or example or I do not remember what but let me do this once again and, and this, this becomes very intuitive for us what is happening in this expression for you is these are this is a this this division sorry I am sorry this difference here is basically telling you the competition between termination and production okay which is being compared with omega i that is the initiation okay in other words the rate of production of your final products depends on what is the interplay between the rate of production and rate of uh, consumption of the intermediates for a given rate of initiation of the intermediates once you have intermediates initiated and left into the pool then the dynamics of how they are produced further by chain propagation uh, chain uh, branching steps versus chain termination steps okay that ratio is what determines your rate of production of products you see so it is sort of like telling us the entire physics of what is going on right just the expression look, looking at the expression fine if you did not worry about all that stuff and you now said this is the expression when you look at it what would you worry about again I am trying to kind of ingrain certain traits in you you now look at an expression and the and the moment you have a square root there you should be worried about whether the stuff inside the square root is going to become negative right. So similarly when you see a logarithm logarithmic expression you have to look at whether the argument is going to actually become negative or 0 and so on 
so these are all like things that got to be wired in your head similarly and these are like the square roots and logarithms do not happen all the time but ratios do happen most many times right and the moment you see a ratio and you see the denominator you have to start looking at oh my god is this denominator going to become 0 right we are always afraid of infinity okay so we have to start looking at when would does denominator ever become 0 yeah so for alpha less than 1 the denominator is always positive right and what is meant by alpha less than 1 when you now have alpha less than 1 I first of all told you that this reaction should not belong in that place there it should be somewhere below because it is beginning to actually annihilate itself the, inhibit, the in intermediates are actually consuming themselves right but that is not what we are talking about for the reactions being up there we are now talking about the alpha um, typically greater than 1 that is what chain branching is all about right so when you now have alpha greater than 1 okay for alpha greater than 1 then you have a positive quantity here and a positive quantity there and it is possible that they become equal oh ho we have a problem right so f s plus f g equal to f b times alpha minus 1 implies denominator denominator goes to 0 and uh, dcp over dt goes to infinity right this is what we are talking about as chemical explosion it is basically saying that once you have produced your intermediates okay at whatever finite non zero rate so long as the intermediates are producing themselves more and more and consuming themselves at the surface or uh, in the gas phase in such a way that the rate of production rate of the production matches the rate of uh, the consumption right you are now going to be continuing to produce products like crazy the rate of production of products is just going to go, go, go on and on very high so that means you are going to produce a lot of products so the intermediates are actually playing a sustained role in a continuous production of products at a very infinite level infinite rate right so this is essentially the basis of chemical explosion and then what you are going to do is to say well let me begin to distinguish between fs and fg as we change the pressure okay so at low pressure we now expect that fs should predominate over fg and at high pressure we expect that fg should predominate over fs all right so this is what we are going to be doing as sp increases as p increases fs decreases um, relatively relatively right but uh, fg is not too large right at, at uh, for for low p because you do not you do not have a vigorous gas phase termination at low pressure that is together f s plus f g decreases as p increases okay 
So you now have a limit, you now reach a limit, okay. So we reach a limit that means we are looking for as you change the pressure how is this going to change relative to this such that at, at some limit you might equa equate right. So we reach a limit where the, the radical uh, generation just exceeds the termination right. So let us suppose that we started out with a very very low pressure all right and we now found that from there as you increase the P okay the termination actually comes down and in this low pressure range because FG is not very active yet because the pressure does not increase a lot but FG is something very very small at this, at this, at this pressure so you are now actually having a situation where the termination is coming down but the generation is going up and therefore you now reach a point where the generation just exceeds the termination and the moment when you say just that means this is just beginning to equal that so far this was higher this was lower this is now increased so it is getting to this and therefore uh, uh, you, you now have an explosion limit okay for uh, starting so let us say termination starting from starting from some low P for a given T. Okay, you fix the other thermodynamic variable and uh, you, you get this so this is this is what you would call as a first explosion limit okay and then as you now look at this dynamics we do not care which is higher which is lower all we are looking for is when things match all right so when this keeps on going as you change your pressure if this catches up again then you again have an equality which is bad right. So as pressure pressure increases further right Ft increases Ft increases okay which implies Fs plus Fd increases okay and here the termination catches up with the generation right then this this was this is what will lead to the second explosion limit all right we will stop here and pick up from here in the next class.